Hi, I'm GM Matthew Sadler, and welcome to this review of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. And it's a review with a difference, because we're looking at the games together with AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system. And this series of videos gives AlphaZero's unique take on the World Championship games. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the two remaining games in the World Championship. That's game 11, which was a Petrov, and game 9, which was um, an English opening, a very interesting English opening. So the Petrov game was probably the, um, um, the least exciting of all the, um, of all the, uh, the World Championship games. Um, it's, um, I think it's permitted from time to time to have a, to have a game which never quite takes fire. And um, this was one of them. It started quite promisingly. Um, with Magnus playing uh, one of the most aggressive lines against the Petrov. And here, Fabiano played um, a choice that surprised Alpha Zero. At any rate, it wasn't uh, Alpha Zero's uh, main choice by any means. Playing the move Bishop d3, c5, which has had quite a few high level tests uh, recently. Um, and here, Magnus yeah, really struggled to, uh, to create anything. Um, to be fair, so did uh, Alpha Zero. Um, when I left uh, Alpha Zero uh, to look at the position uh, for, uh, for its minute, it wanted to play this line, uh, rook e1, d5, and queen f4, which actually coincides with, um, with uh, hot theory, actually, at the moment. Um, and after rook e8, which was its favorite move, um, it started off reasonably optimistic, but um, gradually its evaluation dropped down to about 52%. And uh, I think the line it played in the end was rook e5, queen c7, bishop f5, knight h5, queen h4, takes, takes, with an approximately equal position, maybe a tiny edge, but, um, but nothing more. So, um, yeah, not easy to break this, uh, this line, I think. Um, and in the game, Magnus went for something rather different. He went for um, um, a very small edge in the, uh, in the ending, uh, in this position. Weiss got a little bit of, um, of an initiative. Um, for example, there's the move knight g5, uh, which is threatened. But, um, but Fabiano, again, was, was very well prepared and had this, um, had this completely worked out. Um, and after h6, um, yeah, Alpha Zero was suggesting uh, a number of, um, of ideas to keep things going. Uh, it started off with this one, although later on it, uh, it sort of uh, decided to play more solidly. But I did like this idea of playing uh, h3 and g4 to g5. It, um, it, looked, uh, it looked dangerous uh, in any case to, uh, to me. But uh, Alpha Zero ended up at a 54% expected score there. Um, in the game after knight h4, um, we actually followed a line that Alpha Zero was, ad was, uh, was uh, advocating quite early, which is knight g6, rook e8 takes, takes, rook e2, knight e5, and in this position, there's, uh, there's no hope at all. And the game was, uh, was drawn uh, a number of moves later. Um, although, yeah, I mean, uh, I have to say that uh, Magnus is amazingly adept at finding ways of, of uh, posing problems. You know, it's, uh, um, and the fact that Fabiano uh, you know, was able to draw this uh, opposite color bishop ending with such consummate ease, you know, it uh, still surprised me, the uh, resources that, uh, that Magnus was able to find. But after uh, having had a quick look at that game, let's have a look at the English uh, opening of, of game nine, because this was a very, very interesting game, and one where you really felt that Magnus was, uh, was, was going to make a real, uh, um, a real effort to win. So after c4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, we repeated the opening that was played in game six. But here Magnus varied with, uh, with bishop g5. Um, and Fabiano reacted uh, very quickly with takes, takes, f6, bishop c1, bishop b6. And now this move, uh, bishop b2, which is, um, feels unusual for an English because um, um, in the English you, you, you expect somehow White to be playing uh, a little bit on the wings, pushing his wing pawns, gaining a bit of space. And here Magnus is going for a, a real central strategy with d4 and possibly e4 and d5. Um, and actually the crucial question in this position is where is this dark square bishop going to go? And it was very noticeable uh, analyzing with alpha zero that um, um, it saw a very big difference between pushing the bishop on b6 and putting the bishop on f8. I think AlphaZero felt that putting the bishop on b6 um, 
there was a real risk of getting shut out with pawns on d4 and e3. So it absolutely wanted to move the bishop to f8. And after a move like d4, then bishop f7, which is, um, actually looks a, a little bit uh, in reverse like the uh, Sicilian Sveshnikov uh, game you might have seen uh, earlier in one of the videos. Um, and actually alpha zero was even um, a tiny bit positive for black in this position. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, very, very, uh, very interesting. But I think it's a, a very nice um, example of, uh, of Alpha Zero's feel for where pieces have to go. So after Bishop B6, uh, D4, Bishop D5, um, yeah, essentially Fabiano, um, I think, was maybe, maybe got a little bit worried that the, the game was, um, was slipping a little bit away and he wanted to make it very concrete, you know, very, um, um, just, just very clear. Um, and I, th I think that mirrors the, uh, the approach that uh, both players have had often in the opening. You know, when they've been surprised, they've been so well prepared, they've been able to clarify the position and, uh, and not allow the opponent to show any uh, breadth of creativity. And I think that this was uh, probably a similar thought process uh, with Fabiano. The position was uh, very unclear. He wasn't really sure whether his position was okay or not and decided just to clarify it completely. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think uh, looking at the variations which, um, which AlphaZero thinks were, were fine for black, um, yeah, I mean, I think I understand the decision because it's not at all obvious. So after Queen C2, um, we can have a look in the, uh, in the, uh, in the PGNs, but AlphaZero thought that E4 was better, but it, it does feel a little bit fraught. Uh, Fabiano went for uh, this forcing manoeuvre. Bishop f3, knight d4, takes takes, and e3, and bishop b7. <coughs> Pardon me. So um, in this position, um, alpha zero's uh, evaluations went sky high, actually, from uh, you know, fairly even to about 75%, about 74 to 76%. What's the reason for that? Um, I think you know, alpha zero gets a very high evaluation when um, it sees that um, it it has a position in which only it has the winning chances and it has no chances of losing. It likes being super safe. And in this position, um, black's bishop on b6 is needed to stop to hold together the pawns on a7 and c7. Um, but it's restricted by the, 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 the white kingside pawns on dark squares, e3, f2, g3, h2. So that's not really going to cause much of a danger. Um, White's also got an awful lot of light squares to play around, and in particular, this pawn on f6 has really weakened the king side. And you can imagine the white queen and bishop lining up on the b1, h7 diagonal and creating some more light, light square weaknesses in, uh, in black's king's position. So, in general, it's another one of those positions where white's king is a lot safer than black's king. Um, the only problem is, is that um, I think just looking at the position, the, the channels of invasion are very, very narrow for white. It's, it's really hard to, um, to find a channel which isn't really well covered by black. And I think that as long as Fabiano, uh, which of course he did, took a, a very crucial decision with his kingside pawn structure, then his chances of holding, you know, despite it being you know, slightly cheerless uh, uh, to do, were always going to be pretty good. And um, Let's just have a little look at how it went. Queen e7, h4, g6, and now Magnus played this move h5. Um, now it's interesting just to have a little look at uh, the variations that I, that I was uh, playing around with with, uh, with alpha zero, just to get an idea of you know, what, was, um, what was nasty in this position and uh, what, what should black try and avoid. I mean, alpha zero wanted to play bishop f3, uh, supporting h4 to h5. Um, and now, for example, if I play king g7, which was my first incautious attempt, then h5, rook d1, rook d1, rook d8. It seems natural for black to try and exchange off the, uh, the rooks. Um, rook d8, queen d8, and then this little creeping move, queen c4 from, uh, from white. And then queen d2 was a nice idea of alpha zero, actually looking to try and bring the queen round to a5 and uh, cover this position, also play g takes h5. But after queen e6, queen d8, alpha zero went queen e4, uh, just some, uh, some little playing around there. But actually the queen is moving to f4 in order to support h5 to h6. And this is quite, quite unpleasant for black. I mean, um, a4, a5, 
The bishop comes to d5, another big alpha zero plan all the time to uh, put his bishop on the a2 g8 diagonal and then possibly line up with its queen as well on, uh, on, uh, on c4. Um, and then something like bishop d6, h6 check, king f6, queen h4, g5, queen d, queen, uh, king f6, queen h5, queen d7, and bishop b3. With uh, nearly an 80% expected score for, um, for white. And you just notice, I mean, it, it's just, it's very unpleasant for black to defend. You might be able to do it, um, but you're certainly not going to enjoy it. Um, so this is really what Alpha Zero was, uh, was aiming for, um, getting this pawn onto h5 and thereafter onto h6, which kind of gives you a clue as to what black should do, and I'm sure what Fabiano would have done, and that's to play this move h5. And Alpha Zero's idea was to play rook d3. After rook d3, queen d3, we gain a tempo on the g6 square. So after king g7, we play rook d1, and we gain control of the d-file. And this is quite... This is um, unpleasant for black, but not unholdable, I think. Um, Alpha Zero's plan was, uh, first of all, to tease out the move f6 to f5, um, and then afterwards to put uh, the bishop on b3, the queen on c4, and the rook on d3. Let's maybe uh, you know, have a little look at a, at a not very accurate sequence of moves just to, um, uh, you know, just to, uh, uh, to show that. You know, the bishop comes to a4, and then to b3, and then the queen comes to c4 like this, and then the rook on d3 at some stage just to, uh, uh, to cover the pawn on e3. Uh, again, totally random move, so uh, nothing to do with alpha zero, that. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, this position, um, white's got a lot of uh, interesting little ideas, a lot of ways of, uh, of trying to invade, but um, you do feel that black will be able to hold all the invasion squares, you know, just by, by staying on, on these sort of squares. So I think this really explains um, Magnus's h5, very quick h5. He really wanted to have this. And I think, I'm sure he felt that uh, if he got an h5, then he was going to be very close to, um, uh, to winning. But uh, Fabiano, as always, um, played concretely, but and not just on one move. You know, anyone can do that. But, um, but on, on a number of other moves as well. And, um, and by playing h4, actually weakens white's king as well. And when and well, we said that one of the big um, advantages of White's position was that uh, his king was, uh, was safe, whereas Black's was weak. After this move, g takes h4, all of a sudden it's not so clear anymore. Black has ideas like f4 or rook g4 even, or, uh, or uh, moves like that. So um, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a great position for White anymore. And, um, and uh, Fabiano held a draw again with, uh, with, uh, well, with, uh, with fantastic precision and uh, and, uh, and very good play. So that concludes our look at, um, uh, at the games of the World Championship together with Alpha Zero. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, unique look um, at uh, the games of these two great players. Um, yeah, and uh, um, it's, um, for me it's been um, uh, yeah, a real privilege to be able to do this, um, to, uh, to see how um, yeah, a player of Alpha Zero's strength thinks about the position and finds interesting plans and uh, augments you know, our human knowledge and, uh, um, in, um, yeah, in this uh, fantastic game and fantastic event. So, um, well, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, thanks very much indeed.